Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the nth term of a sequence. This is a sequence that's neither arithmetic nor geometric, but kind of both. Why did I say kind of? Because it actually displays some interesting properties, which we'll talk about in a little bit. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback and let's get started. Now, so at the beginning I mentioned that this is kind of like uh, both arithmetic and geometric. Actually, if you have a sequence that is both arithmetic and geometric, then it's a constant sequence, right? But this is not a constant sequence, obviously. But the reason why I said that is because if you consider the terms, now how do we get the second term from the first one? Hopefully I gave you enough uh, terms to kind of figure out the pattern here, even though it wasn't mentioned. But basically, this is what I'm trying to say here. Each term is obtained by doubling the previous term and then adding one. Make sense? So you take the two, double that, you get four, and then add one. You take the five, multiply by two, and then add one. Eleven, multiply by two, add one. So on and so forth. Make sense? Okay. So you might be saying, but then isn't it a n then 2n minus 1? Nope. That's, or 2n plus 1? That's not the case because obviously this is not arithmetic, right? So, nor is it geometric. How do we find the n term? So here, this is what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to give you the answer and as a claim. So I'm going to claim that, hey, this is the n term. And then I'll prove it by using mathematical induction. And then I'll show you how to come up with the formula. Okay? Sounds good? Let's get started. Now, the n term of this sequence is actually given, and this is going to be a general formula, so you can apply it to any situation, is given by a n equals 2 to the power n plus 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 1. Now, this might look a little surprising, and you'll see why in a little bit, but let me just go ahead and give you a little motivation. For example, if you replace n with 1, then you get a1 or a sub 1, as some people say, but I just prefer to say a1, which means a sub 1 all the time. This is going to be 2 to the first power plus 2 to the power 0 minus 1. Obviously, this is 1. They cancel out and we end up with 2, which is the first term. But you may not be convinced yet, so let's go ahead and find the third one. How about this? 2 to the third plus 2 to the second minus 1. It's 8 plus 4. 12 minus 1 is equal to 11. Okay, let's find the fifth one. And you know you can just continue to verify this for many terms. But that's not the goal. If you replace n with 5 in this formula here, which is this one, then you would get 2 to the fifth plus 2 to the fourth minus 1. This is 32 plus 16 minus 1. And that is equal to 47. You know that I'm going to be obsessed with this, right? Okay, so I got to write it again. Here we go. So, this formula seems to work for at least for these terms, right? So, but that's not just a proof. It's a claim. So, I claim that this is the formula. How would you prove that? Okay, either prove or disprove, right? Well, we're going to use mathematical induction. So, here's how it works. First of all, we're going to see that this works for n equals 1. Okay, a n formula. So, that's my claim. This is my claim. I say that, hey, this works for all n which is obviously uh, positive integers, okay? n equals 1 gives us, as you know, we just verified it, but let's do it one more time, 2 to the first plus 2 to the power 0 minus 1, which is equal to 2. So n equals 1 works. This is our basically the first case or base case or whatever you want to call it. Now, for mathematical induction, I'm just going to assume that for n equals k, the formula works. This is an assumption, but we're going to verify that. Okay, n equals k meaning that you're going to replace n with k and you're going to be getting, okay, I'm claiming that a k equals, or I'm assuming that actually rather, 2 to the power k plus 2 to the power k minus 1 minus 1. Okay, so now my goal is to show that this implies the case for n equals k plus 1, which should look like this, a to the a sub k plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power k plus 1 plus 2 to the power k plus 1 minus 1 minus 1, which means 2 to the power k. 
Okay, cool. But I can't claim that this is true. What I need to show is that this case implies that case. And I can do that by assuming that this is true. And if I can get this as a result, then I'm good to go. Okay, now as you know, we double and add one, right? So I can safely say that, well, if you wanna get the K plus first term, you gotta take the term before that, the Kth term, in other words, multiply by two and add one. Well, based on our assumption, we know that, we know that A sub K is equal to two to the power K plus two to the power K minus one minus one. So let's go ahead and distribute this. This is going to be two to the power K plus one plus two to the power one times this is gonna give us two to the power K minus one. Obviously, this tells you that our formula for a k implies a k plus one, which means by mathematical induction, I can safely say that, hey, this formula is true, okay? It's been proven. But now let's talk about the second chapter of this video. And that's going to be about how to come up with this formula because I didn't just come out of the blue, right? I mean, there's a way to come up with this answer. Okay, now let's talk about that now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to uh, list these terms again. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. What did we start with? The first term was two, right? Double and add one, five, double and add one, 11, and then you get 23 and then 47. And then, okay, you want one more? Okay, 95, fine, okay. You don't have to write a bunch of terms. But I just wanna show you, okay, if this is a one, this is a two, this is a three, this is a four, right? This is a five and this is a six. I know some people get mad at me because I, I didn't say a sub six, but you know, this is just the way I say it. Okay, hopefully you'll be fine with that. Anyways, so these are the terms indexed and everything looks good. Now, my goal is to come up with this formula, right? How am I gonna come up with it? Okay, so I want you to see the pattern here. So look at the relationship between A2 and A1. A2 can be written as what? Two times A1 plus one, correct? Awesome, great, we knew that. A sub three or A3 is equal to two A2 plus one. But let's go ahead and uh, simplify this a little bit more. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to replace the A2 with this one. And let's see, put that in parentheses, right? And we've done that for the case K and K plus one. So it's a similar approach. But here you get a more numerical result, hopefully. Okay, so from here a sub three, did I say a sub three? Okay, <laughs> okay, so that's gonna give you four a one, uh, which you can write as two squared a one plus two plus one. Now, I don't want you to add the two and the one and come up with uh, three because we wanna come, come up with a pattern or and it's better if we don't distribute that. Okay, now, a four is gonna be two times a three plus one. And if you replace a three with what it is, two squared a one plus two plus one. Again, we're not simplifying this, okay? Just bear with me while I give you a clearer picture. So when you distribute two times two squared is don't multiply them, just write it as two to the third times a one. And then two times two, write it as two squared and then two times one is two, but don't forget that after multiplying by two, we always have to add one. So that's gonna be plus one. You see the pattern? Okay, hopefully you did, but if you didn't, let's do one more. Okay, A5 is equal to what? Two times A4 plus one, isn't it? So A5 is gonna equal two times this giant expression here. Let's go ahead and copy that. This expression right here, okay, plus one. And now if you distribute, you're gonna see that this is two to the fourth A1 plus two to the third plus two to the second plus two plus one. Okay, awesome. Now, hopefully a pattern is beginning to emerge. Now, what do you see here? Let's take a look at this one. I think you have enough terms. A5 is given by, it starts off with two to the fourth, which means one less than five. Okay, great, the power comes from five minus one. A1 is pretty much constant. If you look at all these expressions here, this one, and then this one, you'll notice some similarities, right? I mean, I think it's enough for you to look at like these three right now, because what happens is, look, take a look at this. I'm sorry, I meant uh, to use the other one, but hopefully that makes sense. So unfortunately it doesn't fit, so I didn't wanna you know take it out of the screen. So anyways, the idea here is, 
Notice that the power of 2 comes from this number minus 1. A1 is constant, it's there, and then it's, it's followed by 2 plus 1. Here it's followed by 2 squared plus 2 plus 1. Here it's followed by 2 cubed plus 2 squared plus 2 plus 1. Notice that these are, these are powers of 2, including 1 because it's 2 to the power 0, and this is 2 to the power 1. Nice. So we're going to be writing a bunch of powers of 2, which is kind of like a geometric series. Correct. Now, and we have the 2 to the 4. So if you didn't have the a1, or if a1 is equal to 1, you're basically going to be getting a sum of powers of 2, in other words, right? Okay, so that's nice. It's a really nice pattern. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, it just means that if I am trying to write the expression for a n, then I'm supposed to start with 2 to the power n minus 1, and it's going to be multiplied by a1. And then the power of 2 will be reduced 1 by 1 until we hit 2 to the power 0, which is 1. So the next one is going to be 2 to the power n minus 2. Then I'm going to be writing 2 to the power n minus 3, dot, 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 2 to the first, and then 1. Awesome. Now, that's my answer, right? But I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Let's go ahead and clean it up. First of all, we do know a1. And what is a1 equal to? Wait a minute, what was a1? Okay, oh, a1 was 2, right? Great, awesome. So we're going to replace a1 with 2. Nice. Okay, and then what is that going to give us? Well, it should give us something nice. Okay, we'll do that. And then the rest here, we do have a geometric series, right? So this is like a geometric sum. So how are we going to add that? There's a formula for it, right? So I'm going to give that to you. So when you multiply these, you get 2 to the power n minus 1 plus 1, which is 2 to the power n. So we should be getting 2 to the power n from there. So a n is going to be 2 to the power n plus this gigantic sum. But take a look at this. And, you know, it's just going to be 2 to the power n minus 2, 2 to the power n minus 1. I'm going to, I'm going to write that again. Okay, fine. Now, look at this. This looks like a geometric sum, except we don't have... 2 to the power n minus 1. So it's missing. So you there's a couple ways to handle this. You can just go ahead and ignore the first term and focus on this one. Or you can say, hey, I want to add it all up and then subtract 2 to the power n minus 1. You, you'll always get the same answer. I'm going to use the first approach. Uh, so 2 to the power n, I'm going to leave that alone for now. How do you add these terms? Well, we do have a really nice formula for that one. It goes like this. Uh, 1 plus r plus r squared dot 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 all the way up to r to the power n is can be written as r to the power n plus 1 minus 1 over r minus 1. Beautiful. I know some people are going to end this with r to the power n minus 1 so that the answer contains r to the power n, but it doesn't really matter. Guess what? This is just something with n plus 1 terms, okay? Okay, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to use the formula. So a n is going to be 2 to the power n plus. This is going to equal. Now, notice that we focus on the last term, right? r to the power n, and we increase the power by 1. So it's going to be 2 to the power n minus 2 plus 1, which is n minus 1, minus 1 divided by r minus 1. r is 2 in this case, so it's going to be 2 minus 1. But 2 minus 1 is 1, so we don't really have to worry about it. Therefore, a n, which is the nth, term of the sequence can be written as 2 to the power n plus 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 1. And that concludes our video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, bye-bye.